so everyone can hear us. So let's begin. So good afternoon again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today in this one of a kind webinar organized by uh, Clean Middle East Magazine in association with Magna Rub. Now I'm here uh, as Megha Anthony, your host this afternoon, and I'm also joined by Mr. Srijit Narendran, the principal consultant of Magna Rub. And as most of you are aware that the group has immense experience in operating laundries and also owns and operates one of the largest laundries in India that specialized in retail and hospitality called Magna Mind in Kochi, Kerala. So thank you so much, sir, for taking time out for us today. Thank you very much, Megha, for organizing such an event. Thank you. Now, uh, the reason I call this as a one of a kind event is because today we are not only here to discuss how one can actually set up a laundry, but also how to make it a profitable one. And by that, we mean that how to get the maximum out of the investment that one has made into the facility. Now, we want to keep this conversation as engaging as possible. So do make use of the chat box uh, to post your questions, your thoughts, and anytime during our conversation, and I shall address it to Mr. Srijit. So do uh, make sure that you make the most of the time that we have with him. So let's uh, really pick his brain and get all the questions in possible. So uh, the last few weeks, I'm sure a lot of you who've been following the Clean Middle East uh, on social media, on our through our newsletters, you have been realizing that we've been talking a lot about you know what goes into making a profitable laundry. So now we have also created a, a quite an interesting ebook uh, that will enable people to have a quite a like a handy checklist on the must-haves in a laundry and. Of course, if any one of you want to take a look at the checklist, we will be putting in that link in the chat box for you to download that. And at any time, if any one of you uh, want to get in touch with the team and you want to have a one on one conversation with them, we have a link available for you uh, in the main window where you can book your appointment with them as well. So let's start this uh, session today, uh, you know, with an interesting poll uh, that we thought of. You know, just to understand that, you know, what exactly are people uh, out here want to look out for. So let's start with a small poll. I'll just put the poll on for you. We want to know basically what brings you here today. It's quite a simple poll. As you can see, I'm here because I want to branch out into the laundry market or I want to upgrade my laundry or I want to turn my laundry into a profitable option. So if you can take this quick poll, and of course, you know, uh, before we get into the conversation, we'll, I'd also like to ask uh, Mr. Srijit to just have us uh, take us through the entire laundry setup. You know, he's created quite an interactive one out there for us. So we wanted to have a look at that and just to set, set the base for our conversation this afternoon. So Mr. Srijit, as uh, people are taking the poll, if you can uh, walk us through the setup of uh, a typical commercial laundry. Sure, we have here in Al Qasais. Our uh, this is one our office and our store in Al Qasais, Dubai. We have some machines here. I'll actually be happy to show you around. We'll be coming back to the shows a couple of times during this webinar. We'll start yeah. with the small ones and going to the big ones. So we start with the small format laundries, which is. Uh, Semi-industrial top loading washers, dryers, stackable front loading washers, dryers. These are all lines products. We sell it in the name of bottom up. The hard mount washers. Uh, this is a typical 28 to 32 kilo hard mount washer. Then we have uh, the mocking systems. Some of them are refurbished, some of them are new. Then we go to the big ones, the real heavy duty Tolon washer extractors from Turkey. It's a Jensen company. This is a 60 kilo soft mount washer. We have a, a 40 kilo soft mount washer, high speed, free standing. This is a 28 kilo soft mount washer. We have an industrial dryer to show you. This is this belongs to a refurbished department. This is a 40 kilo refurbished, 40 kilo tolon machine that we sell in this market. This is again a refurbished barrier wall. This is a 68 kilo Lavamac barrier wall. This is the 2010 model. We have completely refurbished it and we sell it with warranty. Again, our 10 kilo refurbished model from Kurbimatic. It's an 8 to 10 kilo dry cleaning machine, electrical driven. 
another refurbished uh, 19 kilo Fibromatic dry cleaning machine with three tanks. All of these are perked right now. We have 10 kilos, 15 kilos, 19 kilos, 22 kilos, 32 kilos, all the capacities can refurbish as well as new. And this is our Tolon 3.2 meters roll heated uh, ironer. This is, uh, we have both in electric and gas in stock. This is with built-in lateral fold. It's 3.2 a meter in working width, 600 mm in roll diameter. We also have a younger brother for the ironer, which is 2.5 meter by 600. So these are the machines that we'll be talking about uh, to show you what we have in our store in Alcastase. We also have the other machines, the big machines like the Jensen flatwork ironers refurbished, Jirbao flatwork ironing lines. We even have the CBWs in stock, but that's not in our store here. That's in uh, DIP. So anyone who would like to know more about uh, those big industrial machines can book a one-to-one -one with us and we'll be happy to share all the information. Great. Thank you so much, Mr. Srijit. And of course, I just wanted to inform the audience. We've just kind of had a kind of quick run through on what a typical uh, commercial laundry setup is like. And definitely, Mr. Srijit will be, you know, going into that space again to explain in detail as we go through our conversation. And of course, if you have any particular specific questions regarding any of the machines or any of the features that you found kind of interesting or quite curious, you do let us know about that. So uh, as we wait, uh, uh, for the poll results uh, to come in, uh, I just wanted to start off, uh, you know, a conversation, uh, Mr. Shridhar, that you were talking about, uh, you know, a couple of days back, both of us had a lot of conversation about the various business modules. But when we talk about the infrastructure, you know, there's so many prof uh, formats that one can look into. So can you shed some light on these various formats? Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. You know, why we have uh, designed this presentation in such a way there could be very small formats, right, from laundromats, self-service laundromats, all the way to central laundries doing hundreds of tons of linen in a day. So if someone asks the question, what is the best ironer, we'll have to know what model they have in mind, what format, what fit-out uh, size they have in mind. If you could share that screen, uh, Mekha, we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll and show them. Yeah. We've taken a sample of 10 different sizes. Just give us a screen? few minutes. Yeah, we're just uh, loading that screen. Just a few minutes. Yeah. There you okay. Go. Now, because we are in the UAE, uh, we wanted some reference points. We've shown the figures in UAE warehouse. Um, so people who are not in this region will have to uh, take their currency to know. Uh, this is a very, very rough budget. We just threw in ballpark figures just to place where uh, you know a laundry format typically is coming from. We've lost that slide, uh, uh, Mecca. OK, so uh, of course, there can be very various combinations and sizes and scopes of laundry. We've chosen 10 uh, to, get, to have some anchor on what we're discussing forward. So we start with the self-service laundromat. What is the typical capacity in, in pieces? Well, it can be anything between 500 and 2,000, depending on what type of classification they have, because a self-service laundromat does not actually go by the number of pieces. People come in, walk in, they either pay using their card or a payment app or a, or a coin-operated system, and they wash them up. So it's not, uh, it, it is not the subject of the laundromat owner to check what is actually the capacity per day. But we've thrown a number, let's say a thousand pieces. What size do we require to operate such a self-service laundromat? We've put a figure of 120 square meters, which is about 1300 square feet roughly. What is the cost of equipment? If you were to go for all new equipment, you saw that in the beginning top loaders, the white semi-industrial uh, uh, small chassis machines. Those are the machines that go typically into a self-service laundromat. Of course, we have the uh, the heavy duty version also like from Tolone, we have the super heavy duty laundromat coin operated machines, but then that doesn't fit into this budget. Um, we've started from the smallest budget uh, to, a, to a reasonably high budget. What is the equipment cost for refurbished? We don't have, uh, you know, these small chassis machines in refurbished because it's not worth it. That's why we don't do it. Uh, what is the potential yearly revenue in AED? That's about roughly um, 45,000 dirhams a month. Uh, 
That's what we've put that way. If it operates for two complete shifts a day. Now, are these figures exact? No, it's not. When we have mentioned potential, there are a lot of other factors that have to come into to meet this criteria. But this is what we're looking at roughly. Second is a wash and press laundry. A wash and press laundry is nothing but a, a small unit without a dry cleaning machine and detailed uh, steam finishing system. Please, no. Uh, no. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, a wash and press laundry is a small unit without a dry cleaning machine. Uh, so it is not a complete studio. It is a, a washer, dryer, and a steam ironing system generally, or even a manual ironing system. What is the capacity per piece? Because unlike a laundromat, every piece has to be ironed, finished, pressed. That's why the capacity has gone down to about 400, because you'll have to actually iron each of each and every one of them if it's a wash and press laundry. What is the shop plan? It can start with 50 square meters, about six, 600 square feet roughly. What is the equipment budget for new? Let's say roughly 60,000 dirhams. Now, when we say equipment budget, it's only the laundry machines per se. It's not the MEP fit out. It's not um, anything to do with infrastructure like the power upgrade if it is required or so forth. It's only the equipment budget to give some kind of figures. What is the cost of refurbished equipment? This refurbished equipment starts with that. So from 60, we drop down to 25. That is, the, that is our USP. We give um, you know, refurbished machines also to all these kind of formats. What is the potential yearly revenue? That's about half a million dirhams. Why? It's because the uh, average realization per piece is higher in a wash and press laundry uh, compared to a self-service laundromat. So even if the number of pieces, the capacity is low, the revenue potential is higher. Of course, it depends upon a lot of other factors also. Where uh, are you actually located? Is this uh, a place where customers can walk in? Is it a studio concept? And so forth. There are a lot many others. But if you look at the facility itself, this is where what we have. These figures is what um, uh, will give you some kind of indication of what is the capacity. Then that's the, the, the next one is the most popular size in this region, which is a dry cleaning studio medium size. Let's say 1,000 pieces um, per day. It can go to 1500 depending upon what type of finish uh, it, it requires. There, are, there will be a combination of wash and fold without pressing. So it can go from 1000 upwards. What is the typical plant area? What 150 square meters is what we've put. It can be even 80 square meters. It can go up to 200 square meters. But this is an average 150 square meters. This is the most popular dry cleaning uh, boutique store in this region. It's different in different parts of the world, but in this region, this is what we actually get to see. In Saudi, in Qatar, in Bahrain, in, 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 in across UAE, this is the, uh, you know, the retail market is majority of these small uh, dry cleaning studio size. What is the cost of equipment? Say roughly 200,000 dirhams for a dry cleaning machine, washers, a set of washers, dryers, steam presses, form finishers, and so forth. What is the cost of used? It's about 80,000 dirhams. What is the revenue potential? It's about a million dirhams plus in a year. Now, we don't say that if you have all these machines in the right location with 150 square meters, you can reach up to that revenue. But this has the capacity to generate that kind of thing. It also depends upon how you bring your customers in, what is your customer acquisition policy, what how you actually, what are the channels that you that you choose to bring in customers here? Are you using a delivery app? Are you using a customer side app? Are you, um, are you having collection points? Are you going at taking a direct pickup from uh, customer homes, a lot of different things outside the facility. But within the facility, these are the numbers. So number three is the most popular I told you about. Number four is an, an OPL. An OPL is a non-premise laundry for a hotel. So this is the most popular across all the hotels because a guest laundry cannot actually wait for, um, you know, if there are several classifications in a hotel typically. We have guest laundry, we have FNB, we have uniforms, we have bed and bath. So in most hotels, uh, all the three are outsourced, but they cannot always outsource the guest laundry because of the turnaround time. Customers would expect uh, a turnaround time of few hours when they give their uh, you know garments, personal garments, in the hotel. That's why most of the hotels set up a, a non-premise guest laundry. That is where what we've put a 500 um, uh, pieces per day because it requires very very high attention to detail and. Uh, Production, therefore, is lower than um, many other formats. What is this area? It's about 120 square meters. What is the cost? Because of uh, typical five-star hotel, the cost of equipment goes high. 
equipment, refurbished equipment. We don't sell normally because there's no demand from hotels for refurbished equipment. But if there are hotels looking for refurbished equipment, we'll be happy to uh, send a quote. What is the potential yearly revenue? It's about 800,000, even with small pieces, not small number of uh, pieces, because the average realization per piece in guest laundry, if the laundry is considered a profit center within the hotel, is pretty high. Next one is a guest uniform FNB OPL. This is also popular because it takes out the majority of bed and bath. The bulk is from bed and bath, bed linen, as in the complete bed makeup, bed sheets, duvet covers, pillowcases, uh, comforters, uh, you know, and bath, which is bathrobes, okay? all types of towels, face towels, hand towels, bath towels, pool towels, bath mats, bathrobes, and so forth. If we take out bed and bath, it takes out about 60% of the volume. So the many hotels can actually go in for uh, guest uniform and FNB hotel OPL, and we've given all those figures, which is which is roughly um, what a 300 room hotel uh, will actually have to uh, provide for, and a full unit, a complete unit for uh, an OPL for a, for roughly 300 rooms. What are we discussing? Six thousand pieces. That includes bed and bath, of course. What is the square the the area that you'll need? 200 square meters, 250 square meters. If equipment cost is given. Um, cost of refurbished equipment in case if it is not within the hotel, if it's outside the hotel, like let's say within the labor accommodation, that's very popular. Um, what is the cost of refurbished equipment? And what is the uh, yearly revenue if they use it as a profit center and not as a cost center? And so forth. Commercial laundry, hospitality, 12,000 pieces, 500 square meters, 2.5 million versus 900,000. You know, we start getting very, very competitive as in Magnar as a company. Uh, we start getting extremely competitive at this point from seven upwards because you can see that a price difference between new and used equipment. Then we have for hospitality means, of course, complete um, bed and bath included. Now we have commercial laundry for workwear, which is exclusively uniforms. There's nothing else. They don't do bed and bath. It's only for hospitality, like large labor camps, staff accommodations, multi-housing projects. Um, so that can do about uh, 5,000 pieces and here you've given all the figures commercial laundry for healthcare again the revenue is higher for uh, a less number of pieces and of course central laundry mix it for about 60000 pieces which is about 20 tons of course there are laundries much bigger than that even in uae this is a 20 ton laundry when we say 60000 pieces there are laundries which has capacity of 120 tons even in this region but of course we don't cover them because we expect them to discuss that outside of it so these are the formats we're giving our audience today so that uh, so that they can anchor their questions. They know, okay, if they if they want to ask a question, they can say, okay, my my plan is for a uh, a studio, a dry cleaning studio, which is item number three. What do we do? What kind of energy? What are the energy sources for it? What are the uh, the best models? Where? What are the uh, typical uh, entry barriers to that business? So, if someone wants to ask a question during the webinar they can actually start with one of these uh, formats so that we know what we're talking about. We don't want to give information related to a central laundry for people who are, who are interested to start a self-service laundry manager. Right, right. Of course, uh, we do have a couple of questions that have come in, so we'll just uh, get to that. And of course, uh, you know, I uh, just wanted to give a quick recap to uh, all those who have joined in today and we're talking here about setting up a laundry exactly different formats of laundry what kind of investment uh, that one can look into one can expect and of course how to make it a little profitable one how to get the most out of the investment that you're making right now so we do have few generic questions mr shrijit uh, we have mr narayan who has said that you know what is the biggest challenge in running a laundry in the region uh, if you can just uh, Kind of let us know about it. Green. If it's Narayan of RNT, he knows everything anyway. But I'll yeah. answer for you, Narayan. Uh, the biggest challenge is finding the right partner, and you don't have a, uh, uh, you know, that challenge because we are your partners in, in your, uh, you know, in facility. Great. We also have uh, an, another question from Mr. Uh, Raghu Harihar. I'm sure you are, you know him as well. Yeah. <laughs> So he says that, you know, when uh, you the screen, uh, uh, maker, can you put the screen back? 
Uh, you want the PPT back? Okay. It's better. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. Yeah. We are just getting in the uh, audience poll also, so we kind of understand. Oh. So oh. definitely. Uh, so Mr. Rago says that you know when you say a fully unit hotel like an OPL, the revenue means that the cost of outsourcing versus in-house, isn't it? That's correct. Yes. When we say the revenue of a hotel means if you know, of the laundry within a hotel, that means that the laundry is treated as a profit center, not as a cost center. So if they have to bill the, their client, which is the hotel um, room, that, that could be roughly the revenue uh, for peak loads. That's all these figures are pre-COVID, of course. You know, it depends on so on the occupancy levels and the kind of hotels. If it's 300 rooms of uh, Let's say a resort property with you know with private beaches or large number of pools or many FNB outlets. The uh, the number of pieces uh, go high, and if it's uh, uh, you know if it's a business hotel with only bed sheets, and mostly bed makeup and towels and very prim, uh, then the revenue goes down. So we've given a rough number uh, based on a mixed use property, which is not a full um, resort and uh, and it's not a typical business city hotel. It's somewhere in between. Great. So uh, there's also someone who has asked, does retail CPU have the same square meter as commercial? Uh, which, uh, you know, which is that? Is this, uh, the retail? The retail CPU, does it have the yeah. same square meter as the commercial laundry? No, it's actually slightly higher, as you can see. The commercial laundry is 500 uh, for hospitality, and the retail studio is 150. So I don't know what where that question comes from because uh, you know in a in a retail, of course, the number of pieces, the attention to detail is high, but you don't have a lot of pieces accumulated in large trolleys uh, and you know loads coming from hotels which you have to store and before the process and after the process. So the space required is high. Not just that, the type of machines that you use in a hospital in a commercial laundry farm. Hospitality is much bigger. Um, you have flat pakanas, folders, sometimes even towel folders, large capacity machines. So of course, it's it's higher uh, in a commercial laundry. If that was the uh, uh, the answer they were looking for. Well, I hope uh, that answers your question. And uh, we also have certain questions like you know, uh, as we have enough sunlight in this region for all through the year. Can we not promote solar fitted laundry to feed the laundry equipment to the extent possible? It is actually possible. I've heard that. I don't know about the latest numbers. I've heard before that uh, uh, one square meter feeds about one kilowatt of power. So um, I'm not sure whether that actually makes economic sense in this part of the world. If they have subsidies and so forth, it's okay. And uh, the latest equipment, I think I've heard that they can be vertically also installed. Uh, I've heard that the biggest challenge in solar is, is not generating the, the power, it's also about storing the power, the battery power required in the investment. But we're not specialists in, in, in that. Uh, uh, you know, we will cover this part in the, in the infrastructure slide, uh, Mekha, because that will talk a little bit about yes, the, yes. what kind of energy uh, application the, you know, a typical laundry has. So Definitely. this is what the format. So in the next slide, if we, when we cover the infrastructure part of it, which includes power, which includes water, whatever. So they can ask, okay, for this particular laundry, uh, what are we talking in terms of uh, power requirements? So that'll, uh, I think that if we get to the next slide, that'll make it easier for me. Uh, so before we get into the next section, we just want to again highlight the poll. We just wanted to get, take a quick five seconds uh, uh, for the poll as well. So we just get gather in as many results uh, as I'd informed at the beginning of the discussion. We want to just have an understanding about the audience also today. You know, what you are looking for. Uh, is it in terms of investing of laundry? Is it in terms of remodeling your laundry? So then, you know, we can definitely uh, turn the conversation in that aspect as well. So there are a lot of people, Mr. Sridhar, who want to know about, uh, you know, the outsourcing of laundry or having an in-house laundry. I think this is kind of a never ending debate that I have also kind of experienced. So what is your take on this entire uh, argument of whether to have, is it the best way to go into outsourcing or in-house? Well. Uh... I don't think I'll have an intelligent answer to that question because it's, it's, a, it's a very relative question. What strengths do, do they have actually? Is the ecosystem good enough for outsourcing? 
Do they have competitive uh, pricing from the market? Are they giving the, the right service? Are they giving the right turnaround times? These are the questions that the customers have to ask themselves. What else do they have? Do they have enough space to set up a laundry? Do they have enough budget uh, to set up their own laundry? Are, are, are you know, central service providers far from where they are? Are they, uh, do they have regular turnaround issues with the existing service provider? Are the service providers giving additional value in terms of, you know, of linen fill service or linen rental? So they've got to weigh their options accordingly to take a decision. For, uh, for us, um, it's, it's either way, you know, we either sell our machines to the hotels directly or we sell to the service providers. Uh, we've seen it works uh, both ways. There is no intelligent answer to a question whether it is better to outsource. The market is actually very, very competitive. There are very uh, uh, specialized companies in, in, in the UAE. So it could be that uh, for, for the, the, the short term, it's better to outsource. But they can also take control of their own production going forward and make sure they have direct control of their process quality uh, uh, by having an in-house operation. If they have the all the infrastructure requirement to run that show as well. Right. So I hope all of you have taken uh, the poll. So we will be getting back into the next section of our uh, discussion today. And before I announce the uh, results. So as we were discussing, Mr. Shijit, we wanted to talk about the infrastructure part of it. Of course, uh, we had a look at the different kinds of formats. We had a look at the kind of uh, machines and uh, equipment that are there. So my question, of course, uh, a lot of people also are asking about in terms of uh, solar power or keeping the environment, uh, you know, uh, and making it environment friendly. But my question is, you know, not every laundry can factor in every component due to, of course, the financial constraints. So is there any kind of a strategy that one can look into to, you know, still to have that kind of a profitable uh, angle to your commercial laundry? Yeah, can we get to the next slide so we, we, can, we can actually take a call after that? So these are the infrastructure choices that a typical laundry has to do, of course, depending upon their, their sizes. Let's say install power requirement. Uh, this is what we have we are faced with with almost every um, you know potential investor want to be invested in a, a retail commercial laundry they come to us for machines they ask a lot of questions about the machines what type of machines the cost of machines features on the machines but they miss out on something very basic as the power requirement we've also had cases where customers have come after having paid their rentals to us to, to, to talk to our machines and they are in for a very not so pleasant surprise that they need power up to 150 or 200 kilowatts, which is probably not even possible in the building that they've already confirmed. So power installed power, if it is all electrically heated, it can go, I've mentioned here, from 100 to 200 kilowatts for a dry cleaning studio. In most cases, it's not even available. Even if in certain cases it's available, it can be expensive to upgrade the power uh, to operate a uh, laundry. Why do we have so much of power required in laundry? Because um, I think we, we will uh, cover the earlier question also in this. You know, laundry requires power for two different reasons. One is for the drive, and another is for the heating. Drive is a relatively very, um, you know, the small smallest portion of uh, the power requirement, but, but heating is very very high. For a small laundry, a dry cleaning studio, you cannot actually have. Uh, a heating system which is driven by boilers or uh, you know gas direct gas systems uh, in, in these places of course places like Sharjah in UAE have gas in the, within their buildings without having to invest in expensive infrastructure for so for some of them it makes sense to go for gas heated systems in small laundries but in in many other places like in Dubai or in Abu Dhabi for example it's uh, you know, you don't have central gas connections in most places, which means that they will have to uh, choose electrical machines. Do they have enough power? That's the most important question they have to ask before setting up. A lot of companies think, um, you know, that if you do a live uh, um, a studio, it is easier. You'll get customers. Customers will have more confidence in their service because they get to see the product directly. They get to see the process directly. But uh, what they miss out is why aren't there enough laundries with uh, uh, with machines live uh, with shorter turnaround times? It's because not because of the cost of equipment. It's because of the fit out requirements. Uh, you know, in most places, the cost of upgrading the power is very very high. 
uh, you know, the, the, are, there are other regulatory requirements in certain buildings that they cannot probably have a dry cleaning machine inside, and and many many hurdles before uh, laundry is live and running. So, in a typical laundry studio, we said 100 to 200 because all of it, the drive and the heating, both are electric. In a commercial laundry of five tons, we've put only 200 kilowatts of power. It's because it's only the drive and the AC and all the domestic requirement that is electric. Rest everything is heated with a boiler. The boiler can be driven with you know, the most popular fuels here are diesel, LPG, sometimes even electric in, in, in certain places. Uh, in places like India, where we have a laundry in Kerala, our boiler is driven by solid wood, food fired boiler. So that's much cheaper. And there are there are places in in in, in, the, in certain parts of the world where coal is used. So many different types of fuel, solid fuel is used. Uh, there can be uh, you know, thermal oil heated. There's one laundry in UAE using a thermal oil boiler. So all the these energy requirements are for heat. The drive, of course, is all electric, but the heating requirement is very very high compared to the drive requirement. So in large laundries, we go from 250 kilowatts to one megawatt of power. So what are the other uh, cost of upgrade we spoke about earlier? Cost of upgrade is a major concern. They should look at it, uh, you know, when they are setting up laundries. Uh, if like in, in a place like India, it can be sometimes very, very difficult to get uh, power up to 200, 300 kilowatts uh, required to operate a laundry, even if you have the boiler. So you might have to invest in your own substation. You might have to, uh, you know, uh, upgrade the existing cabling network to to get that kind of a power. You might have to look at multiple feeders to feed your laundry, just in in, in order to ensure that there's continuous power supply and so forth. So these are the major concerns when it comes to installed power requirement. Before and uh, we've also covered the source of energy. It could be fully electric. It could be diesel. It could be boiler um, gas driven boiler it could be solid fuel boiler it could be direct gas because gas can also give you indirect uh, energy and also it can also give you direct energy like um, a gas with like an example of gas with indirect energy is the gas drives the boiler the boiler generates steam the steam drives the machines like flat work ironers and um, and dryers mostly because these are the uh, highest power consuming machines in, in any given world. There are other options like direct gas driven uh, dryers, direct gas driven uh, flat work ironers, which means that the boiler size will be reduced. So if there is a hotel which already has existing gas network for their kitchens and for their hot water generators, it could probably be a better idea for them to take a connection into the laundry and feed their dryers and ironers with gas, which means they'll save a lot on the installed um, uh, boiler requirement. Do we go? Uh, you know, yeah. talk we do have a few now? questions, yeah. and uh, we'll definitely go to the next slide as well. Uh, there's someone who has asked, like, you know, since we have enough sunlight in the region for you know throughout the year, can we not promote uh, solar fitted laundry to feed the laundry equipment to that extent? Well, I think we we answered this question earlier. Uh, it's not our subject. We are not specialists in solar power, power systems. Uh, what we've heard, it's not as popular as it should be because of the install power requirement. Uh, you know, because of the install capacity versus the install the, the investment required to set up solar panels. We don't know about the latest developments in in, in in solar panels. I've heard that there are very very efficient solar panels, but that's not a question we can answer. We can tell you that this is the power required for a laundry. How you generate that power, whether you um, do a, a hybrid of uh, solar panels along with a, a power grid uh, from the service provider, or you do it completely uh, using generators. There are some laundries even run with complete generators, diesel driven generators here, because they don't have enough power. Or you have uh, only uh, the power grid. These are subjects that we are not specialists in. It does, it's not related directly to the laundry, it's related behind our power requirement. Sure. There is also someone who's asked, like, what is the space required to clean about 20,000 pieces per week for retail CPU? For retail? Yeah. Yeah, retail is about uh, 20,000 pieces a week, assuming that it's about, uh, it's, it's working for seven days, it's about 3,000 pieces in a day, uh, roughly. So if it's 3,000 pieces in a day of 20 hours, all you need is about 250 square meters of space, roughly. If you have 250, you know, that's generous. Great. 
I hope that answers your question, sir. We also have someone who once wanted advice on manpower utilization or setting up manpower procedure for general commercial laundries in India. Uh, which format are we discussing here? What type of uh, uh, laundry? Uh, they have not specified laundry. what kind of, uh, they're saying general commercial laundry. Or for a central laundry, it's totally different. For a retail laundry, it's again different. For a work where it's different. So that is why we started with that slide, so that if someone asks a question from that point, we know yeah. what kind of uh, answers best suits that, uh, that question. So uh, if you could, uh, I would just suggest if Mr. Kartikin could tell us what kind of laundry that he's specifying, we'll definitely address, come back to that question. Uh, we also have a question uh, by Ms. Christina, who said that, why not the small laundries be fired with gas instead of diesel to contain the operations cost and keep the environment clean? Well, yeah, I think we answered a part of it earlier. Uh, gas can actually address majority of the problem, but it cannot address completely. Because let's say power requirement is in, uh, you know, is, is for three different three different applications for power, uh, for steam as in. Uh, we can use gas to have, um, to dry the clothes using the dryer. We can use gas to drive the flat work ironers, but we cannot use gas to uh, drive washer extractors. Of course, there are in Europe uh, some companies converting, uh, you know, with gas burners inside the washers, but that's too complicated. It's not popular as yet. So washer extractors will still need steam or electricity. The steam presses will steam still need steam or electricity. So you can reduce the, uh, you know, the requirement of uh, steam or electricity, but you cannot eliminate it with gas. Then again, gas uh, is uh, they come in three different ways. One is uh, the LPG gas, which comes in cylinders, commercial cylinders, where you have a cylinder bank. Uh, it, it is feeding a small shop. It is uh, approved. They, they get approvals when we're talking about UAE. They get approvals for it in Dubai, in some places in Abu Dhabi, in some places in Sharjah, but they don't get it everywhere. Second part is uh, large for large laundries, there is a central tank which is an underground tank with a lot of fencing, protective fencing and free space around it. This is fitted with a tank yard. That's the second tank. Third is uh, only available so far in Sharjah, which is a natural gas connection, which means you don't need any storage space. It's actually uh, all storage tanks. It's directly networked. The Sharjah government then networks natural gas to homes and institutions separately. So depending upon where you're coming from, what type of uh, uh, you know, service providers you have in, uh, in, the, in the place that you're planning your laundry, I think you can take a call. There are other, uh, you know, types of gas also like SNGs and, uh, you know, so, so many different formats. Depends upon where you want to set it up. If it's a hotel which already has gas, if it is, a, uh, you know, another facility which already has gas for something else, it's better to piggyback on that existing infrastructure. To set it up exclusively for a laundry, you'll have to see which is uh, the best thing depending on where you are positioned. Uh, we also have Mr. Joseph who has asked us, you know, how do you calculate the outsourced laundry productivity or pounds or pieces per operator? Uh, uh, you know, again, which format are we talking about? When you say for outsource, outsourced, why do you have to actually do uh, that kind of uh, uh, calculation is why I failed to understand. I didn't get the question right either. Okay, Mr. Joseph, if you could just specify to us which uh, type of laundry, then maybe we can get back to that question. Uh, it depends a lot on what kind of automation level you have. What is your business model? Let's say uh, we have two types of business model in hospitality. One is a customer-owned linen, another is the linen full service. So if you have customer-owned linen, that means that a hotel which has about 300 rooms gives out, say, roughly... Uh, 1,000 pieces in a day. Hmm. The same 1,000 pieces will have to return next day or whatever is the contract. Exactly the same. But when we're talking about mature markets like Europe or US, it's not the case. It's a very, uh, the ecosystem is much more mature. They have poor linen. They have standard poor linen. And they say, okay, uh, okay, this hotel, how many shirks do you require? 500, take it. It's given from the stock. That hmm. particular outfit, how many uh, towels do you need? 500. It's a linen rental or linen full service model. It works in a different, uh, uh, you know, totally different uh, uh, method altogether. Because you can line up, you can accumulate the same type of linen back to back and you can get out efficiency. But if you have to actually, if you're forced to uh, turn around the same linen within that uh, 
within that stipulated turnaround time, that becomes a challenge. Manpower increases, automation, the scope of automation reduces, and so forth. It's a never-ending subject uh, uh, that way. Sure. There are a lot of people who are asking about boilers. So maybe you know, if you can go out and show us as well. A lot of them asking: Are uh, wood brick uh, fire boilers are they more cost effective? And also, there are some uh, who are asking which one boiler is best uh, for laundry, like LPG diesel or electric. No, uh, it's not about laundry. You know, um, I'll tell you. Uh, we we only look at what is the volume of steam generated. What is the steam pressure generated? whatever can give you the best uh, value for me from where you are. Like uh, if you're in India, for example, depending upon where you are in India, there can be different types of fuels. I think we've already spoken about it. There can be palm shells, there can be um, you know, firewood, there can be, if even within that uh, firewood, there can be tamarind, uh, you know, rubber wood, mix it wood. You know, it depends upon where you are and what is the closest uh, you have uh, to these sources of fuel. Uh, one problem generally with firewood is that even if it's uh, for the given calorific value, it is it is cheaper. The steam pressure that it can actually maintain throughout the uh, laundry operation is not as much as good as it as a diesel generated boiler. Sorry, a diesel driven or an LPG driven boiler can. That can actually give you 10 bars of pressure constantly because if the pressure drops. Uh, the, the burners immediately starts again and it meets up the, the, the gap. But a firewood boiler is pretty much a manual. A lot of it is, is a manual process, which means if your pressure drops, you need time to catch up with whatever you've lost. So, uh, and you know, it's if you have a choice between diesel and firewood in a place like India, I think firewood would be um, easily the option. But it also depends upon where you are. If you are in a hotel, for example, you have no choice but to go for diesel or, or gas. If you are in an industrial area, if you have your own plot with a lot of space, because firewood is a dirty fuel, you know, it's, 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 it requires a lot of storage space. Uh, of course, you can compress, you can reduce the storage space with, by using briquettes and a lot of other types of uh, condensed uh, now you know, plywood based and a lot of other things. But even then, it's a manual process. It's not completely controlled uh, and uh, with modulating burners like uh, diesel or gas or even electric. So uh, the choice of fuel depends upon where you are and what is uh, the best fuel in your given uh, area. It is, there's no uh, one right answer to all of them. Right. So I uh, there's also another question who they ask about, you know, uh, what is your opinion or your take on uh, possibility of surplus laundry capacity available in the country to be used by any aggregator model? Well, yeah. Um, if, if they can work out the logistics, it's about what who who decides what kind of capacity there is. That is where we've seen a lot of disparities in what the design is and what the actual throughput is. If you have, let's say, surplus capacity, it's 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 easier to actually uh, you know use an aggregator model and work with others. But do you, do you actually have them, or is are you talking about your actual throughput or your design capacity? What we see uh, the most common errors is people they add up the uh, the capacities. Okay, I have a hundred kilo washer, I have a fifty kilo washer, twenty kilo washer. They add up and they say, okay, I need forty minutes a cycle. And okay, so it's uh, okay. For example, three hundred kilos per cycle into one point three, three hundred and ninety kilos per hour. That calculation is what we have to actually inspect. Do we actually have that kind of a, a spare load? And washer is only the beginning of the cycle. Does it match directly with the capacity of dryers we have downstream? Does it also match with the flat work ironing capacity that we have? Does it actually, is there or is there a bottleneck somewhere in the process? It could be that in most cases, it could be that 90% of the load is handled in, uh, let's say, in 30% of the time. And for the balance 10%, you actually struggle completing it. So if they can work out that aggregator's best work and they have linen rental models. Customer-owned linen aggregation is is a logistics nightmare, but there are some people who have, who have figured that model out and I think they're doing good. And also, what is the typical cost of operation per kilo for a mid-sized uh, laundry over here in, in the Middle East? Well, we've seen figures depending upon what type of fuel, how well they've organized the operations. Uh, you know, uh, we've seen somewhere between 1.4 and 1.6 per kilo of, of, of hospitality level. 
you know, that is where we, we uh, and this includes everything. It's not just uh, the variables, it's the variables, it's the, um, you know, this is for a, for a typical laundry, which is run uh, reasonably well. If you, the biggest, the common, uh, the most common assumption error is the bigger your laundry is, the lower your cost is, uh, which is not the case, which is, uh, uh, which is not the case in, in, in most laundries. It doesn't have to be, you know, we always tell this to our customers, if you're doing 250 pieces, you're probably losing some money. If you're doing 400 pieces, you're breaking even. If you're doing 600 pieces, wow, you're making profits. If you're doing 800 pieces, super profits. If you're doing 1,000 pieces, you've, you've reduced. 2,000 pieces, you cannot even handle. This is more important for retail than for institution. Right. So, uh, so I also wanted to know now that we've spoken about, uh, you know, the various formats, we've spoken about the, some of the equipment choices, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of options out there for people, especially uh, someone who's looking into investing uh, the laundry. And we do have about quite a few over here in the audience who are looking at uh, looking at investing into laundries. But what are the kind of things that they need to look into, especially when they're spoiled for choice in the market? So what format? What kind of format they have, uh, you know, they are more interested in and why are they actually choosing that model? If, uh, if they have some kind of synergies with other businesses that they have, uh, are they doing a hospitality laundry because they have something else to do with hotels? They already know a lot of, uh, you know, uh, hotel operators, they are in touch with them. They, they have, uh, there are some linen supply companies who look for forward integration by acquiring or building a laundry. There are linen rental companies who look for backward integration by, uh, you know, acquiring a laundry. Or, uh, because, you know, I think it's a, it's a choice that they've got to take depending upon what type of format it is. Retail is the only one which is, uh, uh, you know, which will never be saturated. Because if you have a mom and pop store and you're doing well, uh, if you have uh, all the, the capabilities to generate uh, the kind of interest from your neighborhood, uh, your, the macro economy does not actually matter. Right. And also we wanted to touch upon, you know, the kind of, uh, especially when we talk about uh, used machines. So what are the kind of risks that are associated while opting for used machines, you know, when compared to the new ones? Yeah, you know, used machines, we, we, we say this um, all the time. When you're buying new machines, you buy uh, machines and service as part of it. But when you buy used machines, you're actually buying a service and machine as part of it. That's the kind of difference it is. So, when you say servers and machines part of it, you look at what are the capabilities of the company, what kind of reputation do they have at risk by selling you the wrong equipment. So we are we are an established firm for used machines in several years. We have a very large inventory of very good quality washer extractors, flat work ironers, and we give them with a warranty completely refurbished. I was actually, I think I've shown you already some in, in, in the store behind. We give it completely refurbished and with a warranty and no questions asked warranty so look at that if um, we don't do a lot of things for the profit of that particular transaction alone if we and sometimes it's it's also um, uh, you know a case where we have sold a machine for let's say 25000 dirhams in 6 months we have to spend about 30000 dirhams to repair that's also possible it's but we are able to take that risk because we have a lot of installations. So we can we are more like an underwriting company when it comes to taking that risk. But the customer is, uh, is safe because they have uh, you know the warranty certificate, and no questions asked warranty certificate from an established company who knows what they're doing. So uh, the risk associated is not with the machine. It's not with the uh, you know the age of the machine. It's with the uh, with the level of competence and current service culture of the company who's selling that. So if you go out to uh, the, the market, there could be distressed sale laundry selling out for nothing because all they have to do is just exit and go. You could probably get up, but there's no one who, you know, uh, uh, the, the benefit of working with a company like us is actually threefold uh, in terms of used machines. One is we qualify the machines and refurbish it completely. Second is we give them a warranty of six months to one year, depending upon what is the negotiation. And that's a no question property, which means that for a fraction of a, the amount of a new machine, they get a machine, uh, the complete set, and which is guaranteed to work for six months, one year minimum. And if, if these are industry machines working for one year, they can actually work as 
third and the most important of all is we sell the machine. We take ownership of the machine for a lifelong, which means that even if um, it ex the warranty is expired, we take responsibility of servicing that. Of course, it's a charge service, but it's our responsibility to actually service that machine. That is where um, we don't have any competition in this, uh, the whole market. We've sold to India, we've sold to Europe, we've sold uh, to other GCC states, to Africa, um, a lot to UAE. And there are hotel groups who've bought from us, large central laundries who've bought from us. People take lease to own for large machines from us. We still have inventory of uh, the best machines like Jensen flat Kiners, Jirba flat Kiners, Milner washers, large capacities. We even have CBW systems, uh, which we um, uh, will refurbish and sell to the uh, right customer. Is there something that you could show the audience if there is uh, 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 some of the small because it's a small store. We have totally four stores in UAE. This is where our office is. So we have, um, let's say, uh, this particular thing, this particular machine, uh, we already spoke about it. This, yeah. is a, this is a barrier wall washer. It's a uh, Lava Mac barrier wall, 68 kilo washer. You can see not even the stickers have actually gone from this. It's not even used. This was in a hospital facility um, in Ras al Khaimah for about nine years. It was only tested for two months. So we paid a very high price and took it because, uh, you know, this is the machine is not operated. We also have um, Milner 100 kilo uh, washer extractors in barriers. We have 200 kilos in standard executions. We have 100 kilos divided cylinders in Milner uh, standard execution. We have uh, uh, dry cleaning machines. Now, this is a typical uh, dry cleaning, 8 to 10 kilo dry cleaning machine. 8 to 10 kilo Fibromatic dry cleaning machine. It's more than 12 years old. A new machine is somewhere in the range of about 75 to 80,000 dirhams. We sell this for about 25,000 dirhams, complete with installation and warranty. It, it's, a, it's tremendous value to customers. Look at this machine. Look at how uh, it is refurbished. This is a uh, again, a 12, 14 year old dry cleaning machine with three tanks per. This is completely refurbished, completely refurbished. And uh, it comes with a warranty of six months to one year. Even. Three tanks. A new machine which will be roughly about 110,000 dirhams. What we are actually selling it for is about 35,000 dirhams. Big difference for our customers. Because these are new. I'll, I'll show you some other uh, used machines also. We have. Uh, a 40 kilo stolen. Uh, this is a 2014 model, completely refurbished. Off mount high speed. High, high speed. We have uh, thermopatch systems. These are used hardly for about a year. It's Y151. It's about 40 percent of the price of a new one. Um, the uh, permanent labeling systems, the heat seal systems with the tags. We mm -hmm. can also show you some huge machines one of the best machines in the world for uh, large capacities look at this this is a 2016 model unica divided cylinder washer unica from belgium uh, it's a half a million drum machine when it is new we sell it for 40 percent of the value complete with a, a one year uh, a warranty uh, to our customers here so this is the value that we add uh, Again, reminding that in used machines, the choice is not between the machines or the age. It's between the company who knows what to do and other freelancer, freelance trading companies who are desperate to sell something they've acquired. Yes, and of course, it's also a choice that the investor has to make depending on the kind of uh, yeah. Uh, liquidity that he has to invest in his facility also there are a lot of questions also where we are getting uh, people are asking us that do you think that there is a kind of a price pressure from hotel properties or commercial or central laundries that prevents a kind of a quality operation so that you know they get obliged to go for shortcuts uh, if you're talking about uae i think yes uh, we call it typical cowboy systems where there are uh, small laundries who will never know their cost till it's too late. So they don't appreciate the, you know, the quality and the, and, and the kind of quality control systems that these large laundries employ. And their competition is with very, very small uh, players. They don't have a lot of overheads. They can actually, uh, you know, turn it around faster. They can give multiple deliveries. 
But for a large laundry, they are limited uh, in, in choices when it comes to multiple deliveries. They have a schedule to follow. They have uh, a turnaround time to meet, which means that it's unfair competition. If there are regulatory bodies in this country, if there are uh, companies certifying the operations of, uh, of laundries, uh, I think that will get better. I think post-COVID, it's all, already getting better because people are now inspecting the laundries much uh, more than what they used to earlier. So we, we have a lot of inquiries from established players for capacity increase, which we other thought otherwise thought wouldn't be possible after COVID. So I think it's it's uh, you know uh, there are some things to look forward to as well. Sure. Let's get back to you know the presentation that you know, we were talking about, especially when uh, there are a lot of questions also coming up uh, regarding technology. Some have even asked uh, where you know how far does automation help in commercial laundry profitability? Like, where would you recommend? automation in the process line or would you recommend in, would it help in tracking of the machines and you know, tracking of the machine some is something we've not actually worked because we don't think it is we are ready for it yet we don't want to take a, a giant leap uh, you know the the most sensible automation uh, people should do is in uh, in standard monotonous type of uh, throughput that they have which is better so they are actually a lot of laundries we know use uh, what we call toys for uh, you know ironing bed sheets. Hmm. The, the single most important decision they have to take in terms of automation is automating that flat work ironing line because bed sheets. Anyone who goes to a hotel to to pitch it for a uh, for their service, they'll first ask what is your price for to make our service. What is your price for bed sheet service? And that is where. They are sometimes loss leaders. Even bed sheets and duvet covers are even loss leaders. They have to make sure uh, the loss, or uh, you know, the loss is minimum in processing these large capacity, large uh, you know, size uh, articles, less such as bed sheets and duvet covers. Automating the flat book ironing line will actually help a lot. Um, automating the, the the bath towels folding will help a lot. If you ask me, you know, well, automating the washing process by migrating from washer extractors to continuous batch while washer extractors will help. Well, that's a very debatable, depending on the scale of the operations and the type of uh, tunnel washers used. Uh, this can, um, uh, you know, this can change from uh, one case to other. Of course, uh, we do have a little limited time, but I'd like to remind the audience there are a few who would want to be in touch with you, Mr. Srijit. So I, I do remind all of them that we have a link out here where you can book your one on one consultation with him. Uh, if you have any specific question, there are a few who are asking if you have any specific uh, machines for carpet wash. Yes, we do. Uh, we have, uh, you know, carpet wash is done in two different types. One is uh, we call it the disc machine, like you know, the disc, the, the like a vacuum cleaner kind of system, which is manual. Uh, you wash in that, uh, you know, you all wash using you using that. You have a large flow. You wash there. You take it out. Um, you extract water from it as much as possible, then dry it outside. We have an automated line which we've started selling six years back. Now it is uh, it has come out evolved very very well. Uh, it's a, an automated ironing. Uh, it's like a flat book iron. It's an it's a bed sheet. Sorry, carpet uh, processing uh, unit. The, the first unit is a dusting machine. Second is a washing machine. Third is a, an extractor. After which, of course, you have to dry it for but but just for a few minutes. Which means that on an average, uh, the maximum carpet's width is about 4.5 meters and the length is about six seven meters. You can get it done. Uh, till the extraction process with an average of about four, uh, you know, one piece in about four or five minutes, which is huge. So if there are, uh, uh, you know, markets where carpets are, are high, uh, there are, they, these are automated lines. For the other disc machines, we don't sell because that's a different uh, uh, janitorial cleaning kind of business. Automated lines, we sell. We have some references already, you know, there are a few coming here. In the next three, four weeks, we'll have installations in Abu Dhabi. In, in Sharjah and Russell Kaiman, will be a ratio. We already have to divide. Okay, right. I hope that answers your question. Of course, uh, you know, we want to head to the last part of our discussion where we're talking about the value added services that one can uh, prevail, especially when they're investing in a laundry. So, Mr. Shijit, would you like to? Uh, we have to these also, um, 
do we have enough time make all these these the slides yeah we do have about 5 uh, to 10 minutes and then we can take in the last set of few questions as well uh, you know okay so we go for for the seventh one this we i think we already covered the marking and identification systems is like okay what choices do we make do we go for pre printed tags like these are the pre printed tags that we talking about um, it goes along with the software which we have developed uh, called laundry flow uh, then there's a temporary marking machine you saw that over the y151 permanent marking you also saw that for uniforms mostly Uh, barcoding systems and RFID systems. We don't want to talk about it right now. Uh, IT systems. What all do you have to know? You have a customer side app. We don't know much about it. There is a delivery management system. There is a production management system, which we actually uh, specialize in called Laundry Flow. There is a POS, which is uh, you know outsourced. There are finance modules, which are outsourced. Garment management systems. There are simple storage conveyors, auto suggestion conveyors. Auto sorting conveyors, uniform room conveyors, auto dispatch systems. These are used for garment, especially uniform management systems. In the washer extractors, what are the choices you have to make? You have to see what is the heating, whether it's a hard or soft mount. We saw both of them there. What is the G force, which is the gravitational force with which uh, the linen is stuck against the drum, which means uh, what is the level of moisture content? Uh, after extraction, that it is able to get. In our tolon machine, uh, we have. a uh, 360 like a typical 40 kilo machine the g force is about 360 and the biggest problem in generally in washer extractors is you know in soft pond washer extractors is okay you have a load it goes in the washing after which it has to go for extraction if the distribution is not proper it takes a lot of time to spin backward forward backward power to distribute in tolo you don't have that problem so it's very uh whether it is for field programmable some machines uh, we have a choice between a key program number 1 and program number 2 or 3 4 up to 10 20 but it's not field program there are a lot of parameters you have you need to program to achieve the best results like what is the water level what is the speed of washing what is the break speed what is the distribution speed what is the, you know uh, way too many parameters which is of course the domain of your chemical supplier also we have all that in the, in, in the tolo machines Uh, whether it's a wet cleaning compliant machine, wet cleaning of course is a, it's not it's in washer extractors. It's also in dryers forming, but are our machines wet cleaning compliant? Yes, they are. Open or divided cylinders. We saw the open pockets. All these here were open pockets. Then we have uh, the divided cylinders. The unique about divided cylinders: one cylinder divided into three or into two. We have two pockets, three pockets. Standard or barrier. You saw the uh, you know machines which are standard. You also saw the barriers. whether the machines come with tilting for unloading that is also another thing whether you need a built in weighing scale system that's another thing what is the filling ratio companies actually give you normally it's 1 is to 10 generally nominally but there are many companies who will offer at 1 is to 9 which means that the same machine is which is 28 kilos uh, you know in the brochures it is 32 kilos whether it is right or wrong different discussion for a different day uh, dryers Um, whether you have a reversing cylinder, whether you have a stainless steel drum, what is the filling ratio again? Do you have a moisture control system? Do you have a moving option? Do you have a vacuum loading? Do you have sliding doors like the ones here? The, the Tolon that you saw, sliding heavy duty doors. Whether you have a conveyor load system, fire suppression system, what is the heating? You have condensate dryers. Lot many things to choose from for the dryers. Uh, in the roll heated, what we saw here in in this store were roll heated uh, ironers. which mm -hmm. also has the capability to do length folds which means that you you getting length folds already you are already have to do is cross fold and, and stack the machine what is the working width that you working you know you want to work with there are some if you have a bed, a bed sheet of 3 meters you will probably need 3.2 meters most common size of bed sheets about 2.8 to 3 meters what is the cylinder outer finish also is chrome plated what is the heating it can be electric gas or steam what is the cylinder diameter that depends upon what type of capacity you have the more the bigger the diameter and uh, the higher the, uh, the capacity whether you have lateral folding which in, in our machine we have the chest heater liners what is the heating it can be thermal oil heated it can be gas heated it can be steam heated we have all steam heated machines what is the working weight we have 3 meters to 3.5 meters what is the roll diameter again what is the chest construction is it a fixed chest or a flexible chest what is the feeding mechanism and so forth folding machines double folding machines third finishing systems they can be steam pressing they can be laid on hot plates they can be vertical cabinets it can be single buck double buck triple buck uh, it can be um, you know wet shirt dummy like the europeans choose it can be tunnel finishing which is not very successful in shirts for uh, especially for retail 
in trouser for uh, finishing you have legger and topper lay down legger and topper vertical cabinet dressing with creases tunnel finishing towel folding machines what you have to check check for working with by length folding mechanism whether it is a flap folding whether it is a tandem blade whether it is an arc folding do you have auto sorting of different sizes number of stackers yeah these are the choices that you've got to make i know it, it doesn't ha happen in in one webinar but these are the choices depending upon their format depending upon their priorities depending upon their appetite for risk and and, and investment uh, capex versus opex that each individual investor entrepreneur will have to take we are here to show them options these are your possibilities we choose this you get a hit here 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 but these are your benefits if you choose a combination of this and this um, this is what you'll end up with so we keep them all the choices we in fact complicated in the beginning and then we simply simplify it of course. I mean, before we get into the value add of uh, the discussion, there is a, a question that has come up that do you uh, see a lot of energy optimizers and, in uh, laundries in GCC? And do you deal with any such of these uh, equipments or suggest it to uh, your clients? No, we don't involve in, uh, it's mostly the boiler suppliers who actually do an energy. I know they, there are specialist companies doing energy audits. Um, they'll uh, come and check what is your, what are you, what are you, because it's not just about equipment. It's also about the fit out works. It's also about the environment, the type of accessories used. It's it's more detailed engineering uh, in, on the energy side. It's not our domain. Okay. Sure. So now we get come to the final part of our discussion. Of course, there's some who have said we wish it was longer. <laughs> so uh, we we will be discussing about the value add that uh, you know Magna would be giving to the clients and especially for those who are planning to invest in laundry. So if you could shed some light on that. See, um, I want to give an example of this particular webinar. We all know how to, um, you know, invite for a meeting in Zoom, like in, I know at least. I know how to create a, a PowerPoint presentation like this. I know how to share that in social media. But why did we choose uh, Media Fusion and the, the team behind it? It's because we want to do it right. And look what they've done. They've done a brilliant job for us. For the same reason, we ask our customers, okay, you might be doing a lot of things. But because we've been exposed to a lot more mistakes, we've done you know, a lot of mistakes ourselves uh, in my laundries. I don't think we've, uh, we've made a lot of mistakes in, 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 I've made a lot of mistakes in my own laundry than anyone can think of. So we, we are learning on all, all of that. So all that wealth of experience, which we pass on to our customers, we actually give them an insurance policy to avoid these it, uh, discussions. A lot of people ask, why are you actually giving um, when we ask you a straightforward question, why don't you give it that answer? Because I asked them three questions back. It's because for me, it's a uh, it's a holy ground. Uh, the best design laundry is my objective. It's not about to please the uh, the investors or or the buyers but, and just give them sell them whatever they ask for. We ask them the right questions. Uh, you know, sometimes very difficult questions, some comfortable questions, but the objective is to get things right from the beginning. We have a lot of customers who've come back years later and said, wish we had listened to you back then. <laughs> so we, uh, you know, we strongly suggest if there are laymen interested in investing in laundry or even with experienced people, you could hire a company like us. There are others even, but we come from an operational background as well. You know, uh, selling machines, setting up laundries is one side of the table actually operating it and writing the checks is another. So we've learned much more when we had, when I had to be on the other side of the table, writing the checks for the costs, where we, when we realized we actually didn't have to do all this. We could have done it just that way. We could have chosen that machine. We could have chosen this kind of layout. We could have chosen uh, this kind of business model, which could have been better. So after that, when we go to customers now, they learn from our wealth of experience. So that is where we add value. We make business plans, detailed business plans. You know, if uh, you come to our office here, uh, we've pretty much laid out everything in detail. This is a typical um, you know, MEP schedule, complete detail. Uh, these are different uh, types of layout that uh, you know we show them here on on you know why we chose this kind of layout. Why are we uh, you know what is this option and what do you uh, add now? What do you add in future? A lot many choices, and we also. 
um, show them what a typical business model will look like. It includes complete financials, assumptions, marketing um, suggestions. Of course, marketing is the is the subject of the client. It's not our subject. But if they tell tell us, okay, I want to do this particular strategy. I want to give them uh, free. Um, I, we can tell them, see, it's your choice. Do whatever you like. But this will be the effect in your facility. It will cost you so much. You'll not be able to turn it around so much. So that will end up in that kind of cost. You're ready to take that. If you fully understand and take responsibility for your um, you know, ideas of marketing, we are good with it. But we will flag you at the right time, with the right type of machines. If someone tells us we want to do a complete bag system, we want to give uh, you know one kilo for two dirhams, no problem, we are fine. Um, we will tell you what it, it would cost you, what kind of machines are best suited for your marketing. If that makes financial sense to you, Please go ahead. But we'll flag you the right way. Our business plans, we've done it after in my previous company. I've done it for TDIC, for ADNH Compass, um, you know, for Aldar, for Alateba, a lot of different companies here in this company, we've done several other uh, uh, companies. In fact, uh, um, you know, uh, there are some laundries which are, which are uh, you know, uh, completely designed by us in UAE, and they are very happy about it. It's because we don't follow the conventional method of designing a laundry. The conventional method goes by, okay, put all the washers on one side, put all the dryers on one side. Why aren't we doing this? It's just because the installation is easier. It is done by engineers, not by operators. If we have to do a laundry, we will first put the washer, put a dryer next to it. The flow of what we actually do is a lot different from flow of what an engineer, typical installation engineers. And a lot of laundries here are designed by engineers for the ease of installation, not for what they're actually supposed to do day in, day out, after the engineers hand out the laundry to the operator. Hmm, that's right. Thank you so much, Mr. Srijit. And of course, there are a lot of people who have appreciated uh, today's presentation and they have found it quite detailed and definitely, you know, uh, hopefully this is just setting the base for more such things. Like you said, one webinar, there's just not enough. Really. There is so much that we can discuss and the potential that there is in this market, especially. So thank you again and thank you all of you. Uh, we will be sending out the presentation to all our attendees uh, post this discussion and it will be available on our YouTube channel as well for you to have a look. But then again, as I said, there's always uh, more information to be learned from our experts and we do have the link out there for you. That's uh, the one-on-one -on -one consultation. You can see it on the big screen. You can click there and kind of uh, have that one-on-one -on -one discussion with Mr. Srijit or anyone from his team. I would be glad to help you with whatever requirements that you have uh, you know for your investment so thank you again mr shrijit thank you so much thank you Mabra. thank you and everyone you know, very, from the institution team thank you all. <laughs> thank you it was very informative and uh, as i mentioned earlier you know we, if you want to take this conversation forward we do have uh, the one on one consultation we have the ebook uh, that you can download as a handy thing we, the entire presentation will also be available it's a great source of information for all of you who are starting this uh, a uh, particular venture and of course in the beginning of the uh, discussion we did have a nice uh, little uh, uh, kind of a poll so we did have the results in so we did get to know that a majority of them are looking to upgrade their uh, laundries mr Srijit, out here today so well, give you us. <laughs> sure we'll definitely share that with you as well so guess uh, that's a goodbye from us for now but we'll definitely be back with more such interesting discussions so thank, thank you, you and have a good day thank you Bob.